Hey everyone. I work as a navigation operations engineer supporting the James Webb Space Telescope and the tracking and data relay satellite system. A large component of my job involves performing orbit determination, or OD, for these spacecraft. This process involves using a set of observations of a spacecraft's motion in order to infer its trajectory. OD is a critical aspect of spaceflight operations as those piloting the spacecraft can only make informed decisions about how to maneuver the vehicle, provided they have a sufficiently accurate model of where the vehicle is and where it's going. Kerbal Space Program provides us with a sufficiently accurate simulation of orbital mechanics and spaceflight operations that we should be able to simulate orbit determination as well. So let's explore how methods of OD can be applied in KSP to reconstruct the orbits of spacecraft using ground-based observations. If we set another vehicle as a target, the game provides us with a vessel label that marks its direction in the sky and its distance. If we can find a way to take precise measurements of the vessel label's azimuth and elevation angles, we can use them along with the distance to calculate the vehicle's position relative to a tracking station. To this end, we can use the DLC rotors and hinges to construct an antenna mount with an attached set of crosshairs. Then, we can read off the target angle to within a fraction of a degree in the part menu. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a problem. Another vehicle's vessel label is only visible when it's within 100 kilometers of the active vessel. This means that any potential target orbiting Kerbin will only be visible for a small portion of its orbit and will need to be in a very low, fast-moving orbit in order to be seen at all. Not to worry, we can just move our operation out to a small moon like Minmus. There, the orbital velocities are slower, and an orbiting vessel can remain within 100 kilometers of a point on the surface for a large portion of its orbit. This does, however, introduce a new problem. When we used our tracking station on Kerbin, we could spawn the vessel on the launch pad with the launch clamps to keep the antenna mount aligned perfectly level and pointing due north. The base of the antenna mount needs to be positioned in as close to this alignment as possible, otherwise we'll introduce biases into our angle measurements. Obtaining a level base on Minmus is easy, as the vast flats give us plenty of sufficiently level ground to place our tracking station on. If we place down a ground anchor, we'll have a static, level attachment node, which is automatically aligned north-south in EVA construction mode. We just need to design our tracking station out of parts small enough for EVA construction. We can map both the azimuth rotor and elevation hinge to CAL controllers so that their traverse rates can be finely tuned. All we need now is a target vessel for us to test it on. I've placed the crew capsule in an orbit with a semi-major axis of 120 kilometers, an eccentricity of 0.1, an inclination of 10 degrees, a longitude of the ascending node of 30 degrees, and an argument of periapsis of 240 degrees. I did this using the debug menu so I could place the target in a known orbit which we'll use later to evaluate our OD accuracy. We'll make our first observation when the target has come up over the horizon to the west of the tracking station. We don't actually need to precisely match our azimuth and elevation rates with the target. We just need it to pass through the center of the crosshairs in order to take the measurement. If I pause the game at the moment the crosshairs and vessel label are aligned, we can record the values we need to make up our observation set. We'll record the azimuth and elevation from the rotor and hinge part menus, and if we hover over the vessel label, we can record the distance to the target as well. For the time of observation, we can see the current universal time in the flight info panel of the debug menu, and we can record its value to an accuracy of 1 1,000th of a second. We'll also use the flight info panel to obtain the longitude and latitude of our tracking station since we'll need to know its location on Minmus in order to make use of our observations. Now that we've recorded all the information we need from our first observation, we can wait for the target to pass overhead and then perform a second observation as it's approaching the horizon to the east. As before, 
we'll align the vessel label in the center of the crosshairs and record the azimuth, elevation, distance, and universal time. At this point, we could wait for the target to complete another orbit and perform more observations, but we actually already have all the tracking data we need in order to perform our OD. This is because of how orbital motion is modeled in Kerbal Space Program. All orbital trajectories in the game are modeled as two-body Keplerian orbits. This means that the only force being considered when modeling an object's orbit is the point mass gravitational attraction between the orbiting object and the central body. Under this assumption, all orbital elements except the true anomaly are fixed, and the target's position and velocity can be directly computed at any point in time. The reverse is also true, in that a target's position and velocity at a known time can be used to compute the orbital elements. In our case, we don't have the target's position and velocity at a known time, but rather its position at two different times. This is known classically as Lambert's problem, and I'll present one way of solving it here. If we require that the orbit passes through two points in space, we can directly compute a family of trajectories which satisfies that condition. We'll parameterize these trajectories by this value I'm calling b, which is defined as the angle between the periapsis of the orbit and the position of the first observation. We can't compute the actual value of b directly, but we can compute what the time difference between the two observation points would be given an initial guess for b. Thus, the known time difference between the two observation points is what we'll use to narrow down that family of trajectories to just one. We just need to input our tracking station's location along with the two sets of observations into the OD algorithm, and we have our solution. The first column lists the orbital elements that we set for the target's trajectory, and the second column shows our OD solution. As you can see, all parameters have been estimated to within half a percent of their actual values. So that's it. We've successfully determined the orbit of a spacecraft in Kerbal Space Program using nothing but stock parts, some math, and a little bit of help from the vessel label. Check out the script on Desmos to see a step-by-step -step breakdown of the algorithm and try it out if you'd like. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube, consider leaving a like and subscribe for more KSP content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.